Slime Jr. just sent in chat. Fantastic just shut down. They posted it to Twitter. These are the developers behind the day before, which is, I mean, we made a video of it on the main channel. It was like one of the most hilariously terrible games this year. And I just pulled it up. Official statement from Fantastic HQ. Today, we announced the closure of Fantastic Studio. That's real. Uh, unfortunately, the day before has failed financially and we lack the funds to continue. All income received is being used to pay off debts to our partners. We invested all our efforts, resources, and man hours into the development of the day before, which was our first huge game. We really wanted to release new patches to reveal the full potential of the game, but unfortunately we don't have the funding to continue work. It's important to note that we didn't take any money from the public during the development of the day before. There were no pre-orders or crowdfunding campaigns. We worked tirelessly for five years, pouring our blood, sweat, and tears into the game. At the moment, the future of the day before and prop night is unknown, but the servers will remain operational. We apologize if we didn't meet your expectations. We did everything within our power, but unfortunately, we miscalculated our capabilities. Creating games is an incredibly challenging endeavor. We're grateful to everyone who supported us during these difficult years. It's been a fantastic journey over the last eight years. 2015, opening. 2017, release of The Wild Eight. 2018, release of Dead Dozen. 2018, uh, Radiant One released 2021, release of Prob Night, and 2023 release of The Day Before, and now they're shutting down. Ooh, baby. Ooh, baby. Now, what's weird to me about this right off the right off the bat is just that they've spoken very openly that they didn't have, like, developers. They had volunteers. So the development was apparently free, except for, like, legal costs and stuff and maybe infrastructure and stuff like that. Allegedly... It was free, according to their statements. Um, they didn't pay for labor. So I'm wondering where these debts are from. Where's that from? Uh, I, I Some people might look at this and be like, oh, this is clearly a money laundering scheme. That must have been what it is. Like maybe they were funneling money into this and then they're going to just shut it down. It's almost like um, if you've ever seen The Producers, you remember that movie slash musical where the whole premise of the film or musical, I guess, is that if they raise enough money and the the project ends up being a flop they shut it down and then they pocket the difference and so they basically can scam the investors in the project because yeah it's terrible and they actually make more money with the game being terrible than if it's successful maybe that's what was going on here but then again i don't think that they had any big investors or anything maybe this was the the publisher that they had decided to shut it down or something i don't know it's just weird the other thing is and I think this is important to, to just clarify my understanding. And if anybody works at Steam or can correct this, if I'm wrong, please let me know. But my understanding is that when you buy something on Steam for 60 bucks and then you choose to return it, or I guess in this case, we should do 40 because it was it was 40 bucks. So if you buy something for 40 bucks on Steam and then you play it for an hour and you decide to return it, what will happen is Steam will take its cut. I think on Steam it's 30%, okay? Um, and then there's like processing fees, there's other stuff that might get like included in that. But let's just say like, I don't know, $13 or something comes out of this. So the actual like pocketed amount for the devs is 27. OK, let's say that's how much money they actually made on the copy um, after everything's kind of cut out. Then. At that point. They have this money, but if you choose to refund the game again, this is my understanding, it could be mistaken, but uh, after speaking to people, this is my understanding. Steam retains their cut. So if you were to return it uh, for a refund, the thirteen dollars lost is still going over to Steam. So they still are keeping however much money they took off of it. And uh, the player still needs to be refunded 40 bucks. So that $13 difference comes out of the devs or publisher's pocket. So that's my understanding with previous scammed launches or launches that are super, super broken is that you can have an instance where developers and publishers lose a lot of money um, very, very quickly because everybody's refunding it. They might have changed that policy because in the case of like mass refunds, this could lead to a situation where the publisher goes bankrupt because they lose just tons and tons and tons of money. But it's also why like 
there's there's problems with like uh indie devs that release broken stuff unlisting their games from steam because they don't want those refunds to hit and even like even if we say that they don't refund the full 13 so when you get paid back your 40 that 13 had to come from the devs and then 27 comes back from the money that you basically paid in it just swoops over um but steam is still taking their 13 that they got before that 13 is a loss but even if we say that steam refunded part of it steam i don't think would ever refund their full fee because steam's costs are the same they still allowed you to publish on their platform they still marketed the game on their storefront they still distributed it using their server infrastructure, all of that stuff. They managed and brokered the return process and they had their staff manage it. So Steam did their part and then some through the whole thing. They didn't do anything wrong. I wouldn't think that Steam would return their cut because it's their cut. Like they did everything they were supposed to do. It's not their fault that people didn't like the game and wanted to return it. So I don't know, again, just to be very clear, I don't know for a thousand percent fact that this is still how this works. My understanding is in the past, that's how it worked, but that's why potentially you could have a game that's like this. That's not what people were thinking. And a lot of people are buying it, trying it and then returning it. And then you have the announcement of a, a closure because they can't keep up with those $13 refund hits. Cause you think about it, if they sold a hundred thousand copies, and then 95,000 of them are getting refunded at 13 bucks a pop. And even if they refund some of their fee, Steam returns like some of it, but maybe they keep 5% or, or whatever it is, that's still tens of thousands of dollars or hundreds of thousands of dollars being charged to a company that allegedly didn't even have development costs and wasn't that financially stable to begin with. So they probably just can't <laughs> take that hit. So I don't know, this is this is crazy. I mean, I don't think anybody really feels that bad for them. Uh, it's very clear that they not just overpromised, but they straight up said a lot of stuff that was just frankly not true. There were many things they posted on their Twitter pages that they ended up scrubbing on their YouTube and TikTok pages. They scrubbed a lot of it because it, like it wasn't in the game. They described this and pitched it as an MMO and it's just not an MMO. <laughs> <laughs> like there's just there's no question there were all these weird things where like they were saying that they lost the rights to their name and it's because they didn't get like legal stuff established it's just really really strange the whole thing and then they had this weird obsession with cars and driving cars and then in the game like they show all these screenshots of tons of zombies walking around and there's not anywhere near this level of density in the game like I ran around for 35 minutes and I saw one infected zombie. And when you shot him, it was so delayed that you'd shoot him and a solid second or two later, the bullet would have an impact and deal damage. Basically, it was just bad. And, you know, you look at this and you're like, well, they built out this whole city. There's clearly a lot of effort put into it, but that's not the case. This was all done with like $300 city block packages of assets off of the Unreal Engine store. Like they didn't actually build hardly anything in this game. They just used off the shelf stuff and then tried to pitch it and sell it as a full game. It almost comes off as like a high schooler's project that got out of control and out of hand. And then he's like, uh, yeah, I'll, I'll be a real developer. I'll be a real game publisher. Yeah, we'll put out the game. And they just got away from them. It was really, really, really weird. But again, I, I just don't think anybody really feels bad for them. And uh, I mean, after after this, it's amazing that I mean, it, it's just fan, it's fantastic, <laughs> fantastical that they release it on the 7th and on the 11th, just four days later, because today's the 11th, right? Yeah, I'm not crazy. They're shutting down the studio again. I don't think anybody's really surprised, but. <laughs> Took my thing!